This is my third attempt at this game. First, when the game got released, second, a year later, and now, here we are. Recently, I had a niche for an MMO. Don't know if it's because of all these new ones getting announced, or because of WoW hype, but either way, I wanted to grind some levels and dungeon some dungeons. Everyone is already familiar with the story of this game, so I won't go over it. Rather, I'd like to describe the experience of a new player in New World in 2023. The video will quickly go over my leveling and endgame experience, but more importantly, a couple of points that I find problematic with this game. Those that presented themselves as a deal breaker, maybe not just for me, but also for most new players that try this game. As I mentioned previously, I tried this game two times prior to this attempt, and in those two times, I managed to reach level 30, and that's where my third attempt starts. At first, I had to kind of remember how the game plays, but that did not take long since the game has pretty straightforward systems and combat, so it was easy to pick up where I left off. The leveling in New World follows pretty standard formula. You pick up quests that ask you to kill mobs, loot crates, or kill a slightly harder mob, aka Elite. To spice things up, the game also drops in solo boss fights, which can be challenging depending on how underleveled or undergeared you are. In my case, the Leviathan solo boss was where I hit the wall. I did not understand the fight at all, got killed a couple of times, then just ignored the fight until I reached max level. Then came back, got killed again, and figured out that it wasn't the gear issue, but a skill issue. After that, I tried to actually understand the mechanics of the fight, rather than just brute force it. And it worked. Other than those MSQ boss fights, you can also do faction storyline, which is, if you really stretch it, something like company quests in Final Fantasy XIV. To break the monotony of questing, you can also do open world events called corruptions or faction events, but in no MMO have I ever paid attention to side activities until I reached max level. When it comes to endgame experience, this is where I focused on a couple of loose ends, like trade skills level up, but to kinda fill out actual endgame activities, I tried out Outpost Rush, which is a 20 versus 20 PvP match, Expeditions or Dungeons, although only on regular mode, and PvP Arena, where I got absolutely destroyed, so after a couple of tries, I just decided I did not want to ruin other people's days no more. Moving over to the things I like about this game. First, and most obvious, is going to be the environment. Music, sound effects, dungeon design, world design, the feel of immersion. This is probably one of the best looking MMOs out there. Zones like Elysian Wilds, Eden Grow, Ebon Scale Reach are amazing. Speaking of zones, I really like that this game has distinct zones and no level scaling. I like the barrier between my character and a high level zone. It gives some sort of mystery to that zone and something to look forward to. To round this graphical portion of the section, I also like the gear design, which blends nicely with the overall game design. I'm not a fan of RGB outfits that completely counter the rest of the game's aesthetic. And finally, to get a bit technical, UI in New World is one of the better ones. It's snappy and more importantly, functional. Throughout my entire playthrough, I never felt encumbered or had to spend time managing my inventory. I had plenty of space, especially if you take into account stash, which is shared across all locations. Now, the bats. Let me first get a couple of smaller things out of the way. First, non-existent mob diversity. This one is pretty obvious, as you encounter same mobs over and over again, pretty much through the entire playthrough. There is a bit of improvement in the newest zone, but that's about it. Second up, copy-paste layouts. This one becomes apparent the more you play the game. It's not just that they reuse some assets in different locations. No, this is literally copy-pasting the entire cave or outpost layout. It was apparent to the point where I asked myself, was I here before? Third one are bugs. I saw way too many bugs for an MMO that is three years out of release. From getting stuck in places, to invisible NPCs, to questionable mob intelligence, to altogether bugged boss fights. I somehow glitched out Medusa fight and was able to kill all trash mobs that spawned there without ever aggroing them. Next up, I wasn't a fan of fast travel points. As a matter of fact, I prefer TP scrolls more. I'm not really sure what's the point of these TB points. If they wanted players to explore the map, then why not just get rid of them altogether? I think I'd rather have no TB points and faster and polished mounts than TB points and scuffed mounts. And the last dislike is gonna be swimming, which is not a thing. So if you fall into water, especially into deep water, you're just gonna die. Now on to a bit more serious inconveniences. First one is skulls. This one consists of two parts. One, the class fantasy, which I'm kind of split on. I like having the class identity from the start, but I also like the convenience of switching between classes on a character rather than leveling up an alt just so I can play a different class. I guess what pushes me further away in New World is how you build your class. It's your weapon choice plus how you spec your attributes rather than traditional pick a class and work within the confines of it. 
The second part is what bothers me most though, skills themselves. You are essentially locked into six skills for the entire playthrough. Not only are you limited to six of them between two weapons, it's also that the weapon trees are pretty bare bones, so there's not much space for experimentation. One positive here, which I learned pretty late in the game, is that you can at least combo the two types of weapon skill trees. I initially thought that you have to pick one skill tree within the weapon and then just dump all the points in there, but that's not a case. You can mix the two to get the most out of your weapon. This still doesn't allow for more skills, but it at least allows you to pick different passive nodes that could benefit your build more. Lastly, I like the option to easily and cheaply respect the build. And my final hurdle with this game is combat and movement. MMOs can have the most immersive environment or the greatest systems, but for most people, combat and movement is what makes or breaks the MMO. New World combat is very slow and deliberate. You are not going to have a lot of freedom to craft builds with crazy rotations as you're tied to two weapons and six skills. That's it. Six skills and limited combos are not the only downside of the combat though. It's also the heaviness and sluggishness that comes with it. Movement is very restrictive, stiff, and in worst cases, infuriating. The worst case being staggered, knocked down, or body blocked into death. If you're someone coming from World of Warcraft, Lost Ark, or even Final Fantasy XIV, I think you'll find it pretty hard to like the combat and movement of New World. So after 60 plus hours in the game, I know, rookie numbers for an MMO, but I believe still quite enough to get the impression you need and to decide whether it's for you or not. This game has all the ingredients of an MMO. Questing, farming, duels, arenas, dungeons, social events, and from that aspect, I'd say it's pretty good. But unfortunately, movement and combat left such a bad taste that I just couldn't get over it. And because of this, this is most likely going to be my third and final attempt at New World.